Hello! Well, in this episode of Finnogrik Vasining, we are finally uh, making uh, the cyclone. Uh, this is a funnel shaped uh, thing, and uh, well, there are two large threads, and then we have this, uh, this uh, tapered uh, cone inside and also outside. Well, and uh, yeah, it, uh, it's a a little bit of a work holding issue, uh, but uh, I think we I have a good solution for that. Well, I have already changed the four char chok, four char chok chok chick. <laughs> well, the chick in the, the machine is now has now four jaws. Well, it's a super chick. <laughs> so anyway, uh, now uh, <clears throat> I will use that one because it has uh, longer jaws. It's a big one, so it can hold uh, the long thing better than uh, the three jaw chuck, uh, which only had about uh, 10 millimeters of holding area in the jaws uh, for that size of uh, workpiece, and uh, that uh, I don't feel safe with that one. So now um, we are going to start turning this one. And please note that uh, the order of operations is very, very, very important with, with this one. You can uh, you can do it in a way that you get into uh, into a corner <laughs> with, uh, with it, and so you have nothing to hold it on. Yeah, uh, I want to avoid that as uh, long as possible. <laughs> well, and now let's start turning that one.
Before actually turning this taper, let's talk about taper turning in general. Now, every lathe turns more or less taper, even if that was not the intention. However, now we are going to turn a taper intentionally. <laughs> we are going to set the top slide on an angle and use it for taper turning. This is probably the easiest way to turn a taper in a lathe that does not have a taper attachment. It is also the only possible way to bore a tapered hole because the workpiece cannot be supported with a tailstock. This is our workpiece which we are going to bore the taper into. The top slide has enough range in order to get this quite long taper board. Let's take a look inside the workpiece. Here you can see the taper as it will be at the end, but at the moment we have all the metal to be removed in place. We are going to use a boring bar to bore this taper. Typically a boring bar with long stick out will introduce at least two problems. Firstly, the shank flexes. This flex will have an impact on turning accuracy and it must be taken in account during the finishing cuts. I will address this issue later on. The boring bar will also try to vibrate. This vibration is not that bad when heavier cuts are taken, but it will become more noticeable during the lighter finishing cuts. The straightforward approach to bore a taper like this is to have the top slide in the desired angle and then bore the taper by feeding with the top slide. This is fine if there is not much material to be removed, but it all becomes really tedious really fast when the amount of material to be removed increases. This is because most lathes do not have a power feed on top slide, so the feeding must be done manual. One way to minimize manual feeding is to remove the bulk of the material by step turning. With step turning it is possible to use the carriage power feed. Also, heavier cuts are possible as the feed rate is more controlled and the setup is more rigid as the top slide can be locked. After the steps have been turned, the taper can be finalized with the top slide. Step turning requires some calculations for diameter and depth of each step. Luckily, the mathematics involved here is not that difficult. First, the slope or gradient of the taper wall needs to be calculated. For this we need the start and the end diameters, as well as the length of the taper. After these are known, the slope can be calculated with the following formula. The resulting figure is the change in diameter for each measure of length. Note that the slope is a plain number. There is no meter, inch, furlong or any other quality attached to it. So it works equally well in metric, imperial, Carlingian or Saxon systems. In mathematics uh, the slope is usually denoted as letter M. Now that we have the slope, the dimensions for each step can be calculated using the following formula. The formula gives the diameter for a given depth and assumes that each step is bored from the peak end. After some tapping of my calculator, I ended up with a list like this. Since I prefer meters over furlongs, the dimensions are in millimeters. While turning, I round the diameter somewhat down in order to leave material for finishing. There is one more thing about roughing the taper by step turning that is worth mentioning. Because the boring bar flexes, the surface will inherit the steps so that they are noticeable right after the actual steps are gone. For this reason, 
additional passes are required to achieve a straight taper wall.
now uh, we are going to make uh, that internal taper. It's actually 14 degrees. Uh, well, the free CAD uh, software told me that. <laughs> well, uh, I have now step turned uh, this uh, taper here. Now what we need to is to refine it to a real taper. Well, uh, just clean up those uh, steps. Uh, it's uh, quite an easy operation. Uh, first of all, the, the top slide here. This is now adjusted to <laughs> 14 degrees. And then furthermore, what I have made here, this uh, uh, top slide is now turned uh, to the extreme end. It doesn't go any further than this. So I use it as a top slide a stop. <laughs> well, and now the next step here is to, uh, with that tip, uh, touch the, uh, there is this little uh, shoulder here. I will touch that one. That is where the taper starts. Okay. And very, very carefully approach it. Now it's touching. So now I will, uh, this is my travel indicator. So I zero it. Like here. Uh, there you are. Now it's uh, in zero. And then I turn this to where I know it's near the center. I believe it's somewhere here. Uh, I hope it is. And then we go 80 millimeters from here. Let's see if I can go. I will be really careful because I don't see where that... Oh yeah. There is your 80. 80. Like there. And now what I do, I will lock my carriage here. Like that. I will never ever move the carriage now. Uh, the set of this weight. It stays where it is. So now, <coughs> so I cannot move it. Uh, everything happens here with this. I need to be really careful not to chip my... <sighs> I'm trying to get it out from there. It should come. And it did. Uh, yeah. Okay, uh, so here we are. And uh, well, uh, furthermore, I want to change that, uh, that uh, blade, it's uh, probably, I need a fresh one which is really sharp, so it doesn't uh, make any resonances, etc. This is after all a very long stick out. It will try to resonate on me, even though I make a very uh, flimsy, <laughs> very, uh, uh, well, uh, very small cuts. Uh, but I will keep the speed because I want to, well, I need to feed this manually. This is uh, a little bit, uh, well, it will be a tedious, a tedious job to do. But now we are ready to go. Just change this uh, insert and then uh, I start turning, uh, cleaning up the taper there inside. <laughs>
Okay, uh, now, well, this uh, particular thing is now uh, ready. Uh, it's, uh, well, uh, it's, uh, well, there is a cyclone. <laughs> and uh, now, uh, well, it, uh, it's very simple. What I did not do was the, uh, to make uh, it thinner here, outside. Well. Uh, this is just uh, to make it a little bit lighter 
and uh, well, it's uh, it ha it serves no mechanical purpose. So I decided uh, not to turn that because it would be have been a lot of material removal and a lot of uh, uh, chips everywhere. I don't like that, uh, and it's uh, okay. Uh, and if I need to do some machining for it now, I can still hold it. If I turn this taper on the outside, uh, I have no idea how to hold it. May maybe screw it uh, into and then hold it from there. But uh, no, uh, yeah, okay. So this was that, uh, and I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, and I also hope you learned something. I did. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. So in the next episode, we are going to make the final piece for this one. It will be the oil sump. And uh, well, <laughs> it's a simple thing to do. Uh, but there is uh, one particular or two particulars that uh, need uh, some attention. Uh, I believe I will be doing uh, some silver soldering instead of welding. Yeah, but that all will be in the next episode of Finno Machining. Ah, till then. <laughs> ah, bye.